Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to subtract decimals. We will go through three example problems together, and then you can try three practice problems on your own. Let's jump into number one, where we have seven and four tenths minus two and nine tenths. Now, the first thing that we need to do when we have a subtraction problem involving decimals is to line up the decimals. So let's set up number one by lining up the decimals. So we have seven and four tenths minus two and nine tenths. So you can see that those decimals are lined up and that's going to line up all of the places. So for this example, the ones place and the tenths place. Now our second step is to use placeholder zeros if necessary. Now for number one, we're not going to use any placeholder zeros. We don't need them. But for numbers two and three, we will. So we will see what those are used for in our next examples. So now we just subtract, starting with the tenths place. So we have four minus nine, which we are going to need to borrow here. So we borrow from the seven, this is now six, and we end up with 14 minus nine, which gives us five. Then we bring the decimal straight down into the answer. The decimal is going to be lined up throughout the entire problem. Then we move over to the ones place where we have six minus two. That gives us four. And this is our final answer, four and five tenths. So seven and four tenths minus two and nine tenths equals four and five tenths. Let's move on to number two, where we have 18 and 61 hundredths minus five and 752 thousandths. So let's line this problem up. So we have 18 and 61 hundredths minus five and 752 thousandths. Now we move to our next step. So we need to use placeholder zeros here. Notice that our problem looks a little offset. It doesn't really look lined up, but we actually are because our decimals are lined up. Therefore, our places are lined up. It's just that 18 and 61 hundredths only goes to the hundredths place and then five and 752 thousandths goes to the thousandths. So this looks a little offset. So what we need to do, we need to use a placeholder zero. That way, both of these numbers go to the thousandths place. Now our problem looks a little more lined up and organized. And we actually need that zero in order to subtract here. We can't just bring that two straight down into our answer because there's a zero above that too. So we need to go through the subtraction process. Now remember, zeros to the right of decimal digits do not change the value of the number. So 18.610 is equivalent to 18.61. So we're not changing the value of anything here. So we're able to do this. Now that we've lined up the decimals and used a placeholder zero, we can subtract. So let's start with the thousandths place. We have zero minus two, which we need to borrow. So let's borrow from the one. This is now zero. And now we have 10 minus two, which gives us eight. Now we have zero minus five. So we need to borrow again. And we end up with 10 minus five. That gives us five. Then we have five minus seven, we need to borrow again. And now we have 15 minus seven. That gives us eight. Bring the decimal straight down into our answer. And now we have seven minus five. That gives us two. And then we have a one in the tens place. So this is our final answer. 12 and 858 thousandths. So 18 and 61 hundredths minus five and 752 thousandths 
equals 12 and 858 thousandths. Lastly, moving on to number three, we have 49 and 237 thousandths minus 21 and 8 tenths. So let's line up the decimals here. 49 and 237 thousandths minus 21 and 8 tenths. Now that we have our decimals lined up, we can see that one of our numbers goes to the thousandths place and the other only goes to the tenths. So let's use placeholder zeros. That way, both of these go to the thousandths. So we'll need two placeholder zeros right here. And now both numbers go to the thousandths place and we are able to subtract. Let's start with the thousandths place here where we have seven minus zero. That gives us seven. Then we have three minus zero. That gives us three. Then we have two minus eight. So we need to borrow. And we end up with 12 minus eight, which gives us four. Then we bring our decimal straight down into the answer. Next, we have eight minus one. That gives us seven. And then four minus two is two. So we end up with 27 and 437 thousandths. So 49 and 237 thousandths minus 21 and 8 tenths gives us 27 and 437 thousandths. So there are our example problems. Let's move on to some practice problems that you can try on your own. So have paper and a pencil ready. Here are your practice problems. I'll give you three minutes and then we will go over the answers. Go ahead and start.
Okay, so that was three minutes. Let's go over the answers. So here are our answers. For number one, 15 and 42 hundredths minus eight and 16 hundredths equals seven and 26 hundredths. Moving on to number two, we have 30 and 9 tenths minus 6 and 345 thousandths equals 24 and 555 thousandths. And then lastly, number three, we have 23 and 2 hundredths minus 12 and 7 tenths equals 10 and 32 hundredths. So there you have it. There's how to subtract decimals. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.